The aftermath of the Xinhai Rebellion saw China consumed by nearly two decades of chaos and civil war. The warlord struggle for power appeared unending, the violence unquenchable. The very fabric of society itself seemed to be turned upside down and torn apart. It is from this crucible of civil war that Wu Peifu, the Jade Marshal, stepped forth into the limelight. After throwing back the northern expedition at Wuhan and crushing Zhang Zuling's Feng Ten army twice at the Shanghai Pass, Wu was able to bring the whole of China proper under a single banner. However, crucial aid had come from the Kaiser, and his victory was far from total. German support could have allowed Wu to create an unmatched army, securing his rule against challengers at home and even some abroad. But as far as the Germans were concerned, decades of failed and corrupt republican government were clear proof that China had suffered for want of a monarchy. The restoration of Zheng Tong Emperor, Aysen Jodo Pyori, came at the top of a series of humiliating demands set before Wu, each dripping with barely concealed German hubris. Hoping to find a middle ground, the Jade Marshal restored the Emperor, but refused all further concessions out of hand. The Germans had to look elsewhere for someone else to sign their new round of unequal treaties. The years since represent the longest period of peace enjoyed by some parts of China since 1911. But while trade flows through the lower Yangtze and the bright lights of Shanghai have drawn the attention of the world, the Qing government is not so different from its Beiyang predecessor. Power is concentrated in the hands of the imperial cabinet, dominated by Wu Peifu, still at the head of the Zhili clique, the empire's military backbone. The Legislative Assembly, a carryover from the old regime, exercises little power, and the restored emperor plays the part of a puppet in the Forbidden City. Wu's military strength, before anything else, is the decisive factor in Beijing politics. However, through the rest of China, an old proverb still rings true. The mountains are high, and the emperor is far away. Changgao Huang Di Yan. In the east, along the banks of the lower Yangtze, Wu's former protege, Song Chang Fon, the smiling tiger, builds his strength and plots against his former master. In the southern coastal cities, and deep in the mountains of Fujian, an old enemy still lies in wait. Kuomintan agitators slowly spread from town to city, speaking of a new revolution. To the north, on the Manchurian frontier, Zhang Zulin's Feng Tang government continues to rally its forces for reconquest, watching and waiting. The Qing government's authority is everywhere contested and diffuse. Meanwhile, across the Yellow Sea, the rising sun looms, and once close relations with Germany have gradually soured. With the country divided and the central government limited to the North China Plain, Will the country again fall into chaos? Will it again become little more than a pawn in the hands of cruel and uncaring foreign powers? Or could this danger instead become an opportunity? Could the empire again receive heaven's mandate and stand eternal? needs you. Back the attack. Share our content or dash over to our alt history webinar. Welcome to Guys Get Cinema Year 2. Back the attack. This season we would like to thank all our webshop customers and patron supporters. Welcome to Sierra Tango, Mitchell McDonald, Feberge Mandeville, Christian Smith, Tree Shaker Tuck Trucker, Cassia, Tom Servo and Andrew Brown. Thank you guys for supporting. Also, a big shout out to our top Patreon backers, Daniel Smith, Alexander, Luke Downer, Mr. Knowledge, De Preussen, and Lops the Man. If you would like to support Kaiser Cat Cinema, don't forget to subscribe, share our videos, or visit the webshop through the links to the right. See you for the next one, cats.